This video is about the importance of indigenous knowledge in relation to saving cities from environmental disaster. This is just one of the many ways that indigenous culture enriches the lives of all Canadians. The city of Edmonton will be used as the main case study for this project. Edmonton is on Treaty 6 territory. This unceded land is the traditional gathering place for many diverse indigenous peoples. I acknowledge that my interpretation of the resources used in my research is limited to my perspective as a non-Indigenous person. My degree is in urban planning and this is my response to two major issues within urban planning. The first issue is climate change. Municipalities within Canada have an influence of over 50% of greenhouse gases, either directly or indirectly. Many municipal governments in Canada have developed sustainability plans to address this issue. However, cities are not on track to meet many of the goals set out in these documents. On top of that, analysts believe that the sustainability plans fail to fully mitigate the challenges caused by climate change. The other major challenge is inequality. Urban and regional planning has been used as a tool for hostility towards Indigenous peoples. Planning has the power to significantly impact the livelihoods of individuals, such as protecting rights, impacting land use, and determining local economic opportunities, just to name a few. Therefore, Indigenous reconciliation is a planning issue and one that needs further attention. There has been an effort by urban planners to engage in reconciliation. The Canadian Institute of Planners published a policy document that promotes improving Indigenous relations. However, this document assumes that Indigenous interests will be inserted into the current planning regimes that were built on Western ways of thinking. When Indigenous knowledge is translated and then inserted into Western frameworks for decision making, it can undermine the original meaning. In order to have meaningful engagement, planners must come to the table with Indigenous peoples on terms that are themselves up for negotiation. It is mutually beneficial for municipalities and Indigenous communities to collaborate on environmental planning, specifically to include more Indigenous knowledge. Indigenous knowledge is traditional knowledge that is held by Indigenous peoples. This knowledge comes in many forms and has a broad scope. Usually, knowledge is place-based, holistic, and intergenerational. Some misconceptions identified in a 2020 study state that people underestimate the scope of Indigenous knowledge, believing that it is limited to being only local and concerning traditional activities. People also believe that this knowledge cannot be verified due to it being non-linear. It is also wrong to assume that Indigenous knowledge does not need to be cited, like any scientific paper without citation, there is no credibility. Indigenous knowledge has been argued continuously again and again to be relevant for environmental management, yet there is a disconnect between research and application of the implications found in this body of research. Researchers analyzed the IPCC's fifth assessment report and found that it fell short on including Indigenous knowledge. The references that were made were limited in scope and vague. This shortfall is an opportunity for cities to step up. Indigenous knowledge can provide dense information on issues that communities commonly interact with. Therefore, mitigation strategies that stem from this knowledge system can be more suitable for local environments. On top of fine-grained insights, Indigenous knowledge accomplishes to link larger forces that impact resiliency and sustainability, such as globalization and politics. These networks are synthesized down into more place-based resiliency outcomes that impact the local community, households, and the individual. There have been numerous studies identifying the usefulness of Indigenous knowledge for environmental management. However, there is none that focus on municipal environmental planning within a Canadian context. Many municipalities have sustainability plans that outline the city's path towards a more resilient and prosperous future. Where We Green is the City of Edmonton's environmental strategic plan. This plan has two main focuses, which are sustainability and resiliency. 
These two objectives are rooted in three main challenges, these challenges being land, water, and air. Within the areas of challenges, the city details their strategies to mitigate the issues. Overall, the strategies aim to encompass all aspects that impact the livelihoods of residents beyond the ecological outcomes. This line of thinking parallels the more holistic view that indigenous knowledge tends to take instead of the more linear systems that are common in Western knowledge. A study examines the environmental plans of three of the largest cities in the United States. These plans were intended to use a holistic approach, but have failed in doing so. Urban planners failed to thoroughly engage with the environmental justice aspect and the economic equality aspects of environmental issues. The solution to these challenges may be more prevalent in indigenous knowledge systems. Adaptability is a major theme within the city of Edmonton's environmental strategy. A subset of indigenous knowledge, known as phenological knowledge, can contribute to adaptation strategies. Traditional phenological knowledge uses the cyclical nature of the environment to predict future changes. Knowledge keepers know what indicators to look for that signal different environmental warnings. One challenge within urban planning is that cities often have limited power compared to provincial and federal governments. Indigenous communities face a similar challenge, resulting in a limited agency for decision making. As quoted in Edmonton's Environmental Strategic Plan, the way we green aligns whenever possible with regional plans that have already been completed. At the same time, the way we green acknowledges that to achieve sustainable end states, there may be a need to go further and possibly faster than is suggested in these other plans. The same protocols that Indigenous groups have used to gain agency can help Edmonton and other municipalities take a more active role in determining its fate within the broader Alberta political landscape. We can also look towards Indigenous communities for guidance around resiliency. With the changing climate, many city residents will need to relocate due to increased chances of an environmental disaster, such as flooding. Others will face disruptions to their livelihoods. As an at-risk population, Indigenous communities have and continue to exemplify resilience. Communities continue to face land fragmentation and disposition and forced resettlement. The mass displacement of Indigenous people throughout history may be mirrored by the displacement of many Canadians in the future as sea levels rise, forest fires destroy towns, and drought forces farmers off their land. Edmonton's Environmental Strategic Plan outlines three key elements for success, one being new approaches and ways of thinking. Partnering with Indigenous knowledge holders can lead to collaboration, innovation, inspired leadership, education, awareness, and new ways of defining progress. These are just some of the ways in which municipalities can benefit from including Indigenous knowledge. The Indigenous population is expected to increase. The presence of Indigenous culture in our landscape should follow this trend. The challenges due to climate change will also continue to pile up. So where do we go from here? The objective is to increase Indigenous knowledge within urban planning. And one way to do so is to have meaningful engagement with Indigenous communities. It is important to bring this up that improvement there alone is not enough. Risks should also be more Indigenous knowledge, indigenous knowledge and Western planning science. regimes. One of them being assimilation. There has also been inequality experienced by Indigenous knowledge keepers compared to other partners with Western science organizations. Researchers found participants declining to participate due to a previous negative experience. Going off of that, the constant need to validate Indigenous knowledge with science undermines the validity of Indigenous knowledge. Instead, Indigenous knowledge should be verified by other Indigenous knowledge holders. So with all of this in mind, here are some recommendations to promote Indigenous knowledge in urban planning. The first thing is to ensure that Indigenous knowledge is passed on to future generations. To do this, municipalities should collaborate with Indigenous communities to understand what resources could help preserve their knowledge systems. On top of that, Indigenous knowledge research should be expanded. 
This can be done by providing long-term funding for collaborative projects and autonomous research done by Indigenous organizations. The longer time frame is better for building trust. Another recommendation is integrating more checkpoints along the way involving meaningful Indigenous collaboration. This could be done by passing a bylaw that requires a specific involvement of Indigenous partnership appropriate to the scope of the project. Another method is having an Indigenous board or committee dedicated to increasing Indigenous knowledge along with identifying Indigenous issues and courses of action to alleviate them in the context of urban planning. Edmonton and Calgary both have progressive mayors and a fairly progressive council with some small c conservative councillors. There has also been a dramatic increase in the awareness of Indigenous issues within Canada. This momentum of Indigenous advocacy is opening the door for urban planners and policymakers to change our current system that isn't really serving to ensure climate change mitigation and adaptation, nor is it serving the interests of minority groups to the full extent that it could be. So these are just some of the main takeaways from my research on Indigenous knowledge and environmental planning.